as we uh, get ready for Brian, we're going to uh, go into 1 John, read a little bit from chapter 3 and then chapter 4, and chapter 4 is kind of funny because years ago, Ronald Reagan said, trust and to, and but verify, and then when we read this, we're going to uh, get a little bit of a twist on that. It's we're going to have to verify before we trust. Love one another. This is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother is righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know, love, that he laid down his life for us, and that we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure, reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in the, you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through 
him in this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. And if we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Amen. Good morning. So we have been going through uh, and looking at the church. Uh, we looked at uh, Paul's great concern for the church. Uh, we saw his warnings. Uh, we've looked at uh, what Christ has said about the church. Um, I will build my church. The visible church. Uh, we've talked about uh, the universal church, the local church. Uh, we uh, we've talked about these things. Uh, Pastor Sansa came and he talked about the purpose, the purpose of the church. Uh, then Michael Stark uh, came and he looked at kind of a somewhat of a from a historical standpoint. Uh, what is the church? What is the church? Um, today, I was planning to uh, wrap things up with the, uh, uh, the church's glorious future. Uh, because the church has a, a glorious future. There, there, is, there is much waiting, waiting for us. Uh, there's much we look to. There's much we, we are waiting for, hoping for. Not wishing for, but hoping for. Hope is a, a, a well-founded and well-grounded expectation of what is to come. Uh, and so we do have a glorious future. Uh, and that was meant to be Shay's message. And then the following week would be uh, Michael start coming in beginning in first uh, or second Samuel and then I realized very late uh, that Michael Stark would be gone for two weeks so then I'm thinking well uh oh so the uh, future of the, the glorious future of the church is moved to next week next week uh, but then what do we talk about this week because I hadn't planned on that and I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me. I, I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me. Um, just pre preaching, preaching isn't just a matter of taking some notes, uh, uh, researching and, and comparing scripture with scripture and then writing down things and then saying what you've written down. I mean, you, you do those things. Uh, but there's a preparation as well. There's an inward preparation. Uh, there's prayer. There, there's uh, a waiting. There's a waiting for God's go ahead. A waiting for God's go ahead. So you 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 can have everything written out, and you're praying and you're praying and you're waiting for that divine go ahead. And sometimes that doesn't come till late. Uh, and sometimes you start getting nervous. Well, when is that going to come? When is that that go ahead that that uh, that comfort, that uh, confidence. When is it going to come? And it always does. Uh, but sometimes you, you start to get uh, anxious about it. When is it going to come? When is it going to come? When is it going to come? Um, so I'm thinking about all these things and, and, and uh, you know, Paul's concern for the church and thinking about what the church is and the purpose of the church and a uh, little bit of history of the church and, and then thinking about um, the church's uh, glorious future. And then, then, then what came to me is, is the, that whole concept, the whole idea of one another. 
Uh, we uh, talked about that. That was mentioned years ago uh, by another pastor, one another. And then it was uh, in, uh, I believe it was the, the first Sunday uh, in this series, I had, I had gone through the list of one another. And I, I wanted to do that again this morning. The list of one another. But what is all of that based in? What is the foundation? What is the foundation of all this one anothering? Uh, because that's what church is. If we want to be really practical about what is, what, what is the church, what is going on in the church is one anothering. It's our relationship. It's our relationship to God. It's our relationship uh, with our families. It's our, uh, our relationship with those in the church. That's what makes this up. It, it, is, it is God calling men and women, boys and girls, from, from different backgrounds, bringing them all together uh, with, with the Word of God, with the Word of God being the center. The Word of God being the center of, of, of our gathering. So I want to do that. I want, I want us to just quickly look at the one another's. And then I want us to look at First uh, John. We're not going to look at everything Dennis read, but we're going to look at the loving one another parts of them, uh, what Dennis had read. And then what I want us to do is I want to go back and I want us to find in, in the Gospel of John uh, the foundation, the foundation uh, that John built upon in writing this first epistle uh, about loving one another because it goes back to the Gospel of John in John chapter 13 uh, and John chapter 15. And so that's our plan. That's our plan. Uh, so first, we look at the one another. If you take notes, uh, I'll, try, I'll try to go uh, slow enough, but I, I have to move quickly. Um, we're told that we are to live in harmony, live in harmony one with another. That, that is our desire. That is, that is our, our, our goal, it is a harmony, a unified Harmony. Harmony, we know what harmony is. We hear it when we sing. It, 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 it works together. It, it, it sounds good. It, it's good to the hearing. It's good to the ears. Uh, we're to live in harmony, one with another. Uh, we're to be welcoming one to another. Uh, and I know that happens. Uh, we welcome one another all the time. We see each other on Sundays, we welcome one another. We, Sunday school, we welcome one another. Morning service, we welcome one another. Wednesday, we welcome one another. Uh, and, and, and we even uh, welcome each, some of you have Bible studies, and you welcome one another to Bible studies. Uh, then there, there's, uh, you welcome people into your homes. Uh, you, you welcome one another. Uh, but then there's also the admonishing, the admonishing uh, we like harmony, that sounds good. Uh, we like welcoming, that's, that's good. Admonishing, that's the difficult stuff. That's the difficult stuff, uh, is, is, is the admonishing, the teaching, the, uh, sometimes the correcting. Uh, sometimes we have to correct one another. And, 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 if we, if we see something and we're not, we don't seek to correct it, um, that, that is problematic. Uh, but when we do correct it, we want to correct it with love, patience. Uh, we do it because we want to see our brothers and sisters do well. We admonish one another. We care. We care for one another. I have seen that in this church. The church does care for one another. When someone is not well, uh, there are people at their homes. There are, are dinners being delivered. Uh, there is visiting. There are uh, prayer. This church does care one for another. 
Uh, I've, I've experienced it, uh, and I've seen it. Uh, we're to serve, serve one another. I see that. We are a church that serves. Uh, these are all good things. Uh, how often someone needs to move or someone needs to pick something up. Uh, and the, 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 the young men of the church, they, they get their trucks and they go and they pick things up and they move things and they take things from one place to another. Uh, we serve one another in that way. We serve one another in, in, in praying for one another. We serve one another. Uh, and today we have potluck. Uh, that I, I hate the word luck. I really, really do. Um, but but we, uh, we, we make food one for another. Uh, and that, that's part of welcoming one another. That's part of caring for one another. Uh, we bear one another's burdens. We bear another, one another's burdens. It's awful to think I'm all by myself. Elijah, remember Elijah? When Elijah in the cave felt like he was all by himself? I'm the last one. I'm the last one. And Christ, uh, God came and said, no, no, no. There are still 7,000 who have not bowed the knee. Uh, you are not alone. And Christians are never, ever alone. Uh, God is always with us. God is always present with us. God lives inside of us. He works inside of us. He releases grace and faith and hope inside of us. He is always with us. We are never alone. Uh, we are with one another. When one weeps, the church, we all weep. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. Uh, when, when you hear of something happening to a, a brother or a sister in the church, uh, I, I would expect you just you get that feeling in your stomach. Oh, my goodness. Like, oh, I, uh, how, uh, how did that happen? You, you just you, you get that knot in your stomach. I, I, is he okay? Is she okay? Uh, and, and we're always, what's the first thing we say? Well, first, are they okay? Then we say, what do you need? What can I get for you? We serve one another. We bear one another's burdens. Be patient. This is, this is difficult sometimes, doesn't it? Be patient with one another. Be patient one with another. There are, there are diff different levels of, of understanding in the church. Uh, one uh, evangel evangelist always said, uh, uh, you, want to put, you, want to put, you want your teaching to be like cookies. You, you leave them on the bottom shelf. Everybody can get to it. Uh, but there are different levels, different levels of understanding, different levels of sanctification, uh, different levels of liberty uh, within the church. But we, we bear with one another. We are patient one with another. We are kind one to another. Be kind one to another. Forgive. Forgive one another. Uh, we've said it once, we've said it a thousand times. One of the most un un unseemly, unsightful things is a professing Christian Refusing to forgive another. It, it, it ought to be an oxymoron. It, 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 they, cannot, they, cannot, they cannot consist together. An unforgiving Christian? I mean, it, it may be difficult. But, you, but there, there's a working through it. There's a process. And, and the goal is to... Forgive one another. God has forgiven our great offenses, has he not? And if I understand that God has forgiven me, how, how can I justify not forgiving somebody else? None of these things are things the world does, by the way. I mean, it's here and there. But these things are pretty specific, pretty specific to the church. We sing praises with, with one another. We sing praises with one another. We together in union, in unity. We look at this uh, screen and we sing these songs. 
uh, to our Lord, to our King. We regard one another as more important than oneself. We ought to put each other above ourselves. We speak truth. We speak truth one to another. Sometimes that can be difficult. But we have to speak truth one to another. Encourage one another. I see that all the time. Encourage one another. Seek good for one another. Desire God's best for one another. Seek profitability and uh, benefits uh, uh, for one another. Stir up one another to love and good deeds. Stir up one another to love and good deeds. That happens at the church. Uh, we see each other, uh, we know each other, we love each other, and we encourage each other. We stir one another up to good deeds, to good things. Confess your sins one to another. Confess your sins one to another. Uh, pray. And that, 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 that presupposes a lack of judgment, doesn't it? If, I, if I'm going to come and confess something, something that is difficult, I'm something I'm struggling with, and, and, and I come to you and I say, look, I need you to pray with me. Will you pray with me on this? I, 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 want, I, want to, I want to be accountable. I want someone to know this. Uh, there's, a, there's an expectation of no judgment. There's an expectation of, yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, and I think sometimes we, we, uh, we're, we're afraid. We don't expect others to understand. I don't, think, I don't think there's a thing anyone can do that would surprise me. I know my heart. I know my mind. I know my will. And it is not always aligned with God. I know myself, and I, and I trust this is true of you. So how, in, how can I justify looking at you and judging you for something that is in me? So there, 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 we, we confess our sins one to another with an expectation of understanding. Your sin may not be my sin. My sin may not be your sin. But I get it. Confess your sins one to another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. That's why I, I like, I like the, uh, the list we have of members. That's why I like the uh, church's directory. You can go through and you can, just, you can see their faces. And you pray. You pray for them. But that also presupposes something. We know what's going on. We know what's going on in each other's lives. We, uh, we understand things. We, uh, we're aware of what's going on. We know how to pray one for another. Uh, if you don't know how to pray for someone, you can always pray that they grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. I, I don't know how to pray for uh, this person. I, I'm not really sure what they need. Uh, but I want to pray for them. They're on my heart. They're on my mind. I want to pray for them. So I'm going to pray that they might grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can always pray that for anybody. Be hospitable to one another. That's in line with being welcoming. Be hospitable uh, to one another. The word uh, hospital is almost there. Hospitable, welcoming, uh, being, uh, wanting to be able to help, to assist. These are things the church does. And we are to be humble toward one another. 
We're to be humble toward one another. Uh, these are the one another's that the church does. This is church. What is church? It's one anothering each other. You, you one another me, I one another you. That's what we're supposed to do. And, and, I, and I do see that in this church. I am so pleased to see that in this church. So we are to one another, one another. Now if we go to John chapter, or 1 John, 1 John chapter 3. Uh, what is the basis of all these one another's? Hospitality, welcoming, um, confessing, praying one for another, uh, stirring one another up to good works. What is the basis? What is, what is the one thing uh, that is in us to cause us to do this? What is the motivating factor? What is the agent inside of you and me to do these things? Well, we would say it's, it's the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. What does he use, though? What does he use as a basis for all these things? What does all of this come down to? It's love. Love. I remember when I was uh, young and lost, I would hear, oh, oh, love is the strongest force in the universe. And I thought, what a ridiculous, what a ridiculous thing. Because I didn't have an understanding of love. I saw love as just sentimentality, a, a, a feeling, an emotion. Uh, but that's not, that's not how, how the Word of God defines it. Uh, to love one another, to love God is to be devoted to be devoted one to another. I'm devoted to God. I'm devoted to God. But we'll see very clearly in this first epistle that if I am devoted to God, I am devoted to my brother and my sister. Black, it, black and white. If I am devoted to God, I will be devoted to my brother and sister. If I'm not devoted to my brother and sister, that would then show that I don't have a devotion to God. And John will make this very clear. Love is the most powerful force. Well, God is the most powerful. Uh, but love, that grace, it, 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 it dictates everything. Everything we do is based in love. Our love for God, our love one for another. And even before that, it's based in his love for us. What did we hear? Uh, we love God. Why? Because he first loved us. You love God. But what is, the, what is the causal agent? His love for you. His love for you. And we'll see that back in the Gospel of John, God willing. So love is powerful. In fact, there are, there are three great powers, right? Faith, hope, love. These are the three great things. But what is greatest? Love. We have faith. We have faith to believe in God. We have faith to be faithful. We have faith to believe. Uh, we believe in the hope we have of God. Christ is the blessed hope. His return is a blessed hope. We hope in Christ. We have faith that causes us to hope in God, to expect uh, all that God says to be true. But love is greater than both. Love is greater than both. Why is that? 
when you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, faith will be made what? Sight. Faith will be made sight. We will stand in the presence of Christ. There's, faith is not needed. I hope, if we're standing in the presence of Christ, our hope has been realized, has it not? There is no longer a need for hope. There is no longer a need for faith. There is no longer a need for hope. Because there he is. There he is. We look out and we, we see each other. And we say, well, we've persevered until the end. I, I, I don't need faith anymore to pray, Lord, help, help my brother and sister persevere. Keep them from sin. Keep them from sin, Lord. All this is based in faith. faith. But when we're standing in the presence of God Almighty uh, with each other, Faith is sight, hope has been realized, but love remains. Love remains. And I would argue that, that we have no comprehension of that love we will have when we see him. When we see him. Uh, we love him now. John will say that. You haven't seen him, but you love him. Peter says the same thing. You haven't seen him, but you love him. We love him. His spirit lives inside of us. He is very real to you and me. His word is very real to you and me. We know he's there. And when God, for whatever purpose, if he draws back a little bit, we see that. We experience it. We know that. Things aren't right. We love him. We, we know him. He lives in us. We have his word. He speaks to us. But when we see him, when we see him, our love will abound. Because sin still gets in the way here, doesn't it? Our love for God is tainted by sin. Our love for God is tainted by selfishness. But when we stand in the presence of Christ, all of that, all of that is gone. There is no presence of sin. In this life, we are saved from the penalty of sin, we are saved from the power, the full brunt of sin. We're saved from the pleasure of sin. Sin may give us pleasure, but we don't, have, we don't pleasure in the fact that sin gives us pleasure. That's what happens in our salvation. We're saved from the penalty, we're saved from the power, we're saved from the pleasure of sin. But someday, our salvation will deliver us from the very presence of sin. And that's part of our glorious expectation, being freed from sin. No more sin. It's not on you, it's not in you, it's gone. With all that sin that weighs us down, that besets us, when it's gone, what do we have left? We have love. Undivided love. Our love is not weighed down anymore. We have full freedom from sin, and we have full freedom to love God. Love is powerful. Love is powerful. And it, 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 that is something that we look forward to. We can't comprehend it. I can't comprehend it. Life without sin 
without thinking about it, without feeling it, without our emotions being, being affected by it, a will, a will that is free from the chain of sin, we, 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 we can't imagine it. What are we without our sin? Well, we have to wait to find out. But finding out, we will. We will. So in uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse number 11, uh, John says this. And before, before we get there, let, let's think about John. John, back in Luke, back in Luke, uh, uh, when Christ was walking this earth, uh, they, they, they were in a city. The city rejected Christ. And, and John and James, they said this. They said, should we call fire down from heaven that it might consume them? Now that shows, that, that shows, that shows love for Christ. They offended Christ. Well, let's call fire down from heaven. But if that's not a pure love, because if, if we love Christ, we have to love others. So what does Christ say? He says, you don't know what spirit ye are of. No, we're not going to call fire down from heaven. But that's where his mind was. He's even called, and James as well, the sons of thunder. Also, John is the one, one of the two that uh, sent the mom to ask Christ, when your kingdom is established, they're still thinking an earthly kingdom, when your earthly kingdom is established, my two sons, what do they have to do to sit on your right hand and your left hand? Ambitious. Ambition. Thinking of themselves. Thinking of power and authority calling fire down from heaven. That's what, that's what John was. But the Spirit of God who indwells John changed all of it. Changed it all. We always talk about the change in Paul. He was going out and he was seeking to destroy, to destroy the church. He was breathing out wrath. He was breathing out hatred. His very life, the very life force was hatred for the church. But on the road to Damascus, he sees the Lord, and he's changed forever. We, we always talk about that, and, and we should talk about that, because that's a picture of what happens to us. But John, too. John was changed. John was changed. He sat and he heard the teachings of the Lord Jesus. He saw the way the Lord Jesus responded to people, how the Lord Jesus acted. He saw the heart of the Lord Jesus. He's seeing all these, all these things. And then, after Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, the Spirit of Christ comes down and fills him. That fullness, that fullness of the Spirit of God that filled Christ is now shared with his people. And John is changed from one who says, let's call fire from heaven, to a man who says, love one another. Love one another. He's called the apostle of love. He's called uh, the apostle whom Jesus loved. And people think, oh, that's kind of a lofty thought. John's calling himself, uh, I'm the guy Jesus loved. It's not the spirit in which John is saying that. John is saying, I know what I am. I know what's in me. 
I understand myself. But Jesus loves me in spite of that. It, 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 it's an exaltation of the love of Christ, the patience of Christ, the long-suffering of Christ, the goodness and the kindness of Christ. So you and I can say humbly, we are people whom the Lord Jesus loves. We can say, he loves me. He loves me. Not with pride, with humility. He loves even me. Love is powerful. Love is powerful. So that's John. And then he says in 1 John chapter 3, he says, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. And we'll go to that beginning in a little while. That we should love one another. So again, all the other one anothering is based in, is based on loving one another. Without loving one another, we can't do any of the others. We can't do any other. Outwardly, we can do it. But not with, with, full, with the full thrust of what's inside of us. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother, and why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. We're not going to spend, I'm just going to read through. I'm going to be stopping here and there. Um, because his own deeds were evil. He hated his brother and he killed his brother uh, because Cain's own deeds were evil and his brothers uh, were righteous. Uh, his uh, Abel's righteousness condemned Cain. Abel's righteousness condemned Cain. So what is Cain to do? He kills him. He kills him. And, and that's, that's true today. What does Christ say in John 15? The world hates you. John says the world hates you. And, and why does the world hate us? Because Christ loves us. Because Christ loves us and we love Christ. Because they see a, a righteousness in us. A desire to do right, to do good things, to be truthful. And that is a condemnation upon their lostness. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. That's powerful. How do you know? How do you know? You say you've been, you've been saved. You say you have repented and believed. How do you know? This is one way you know. We know we have passed from spiritual deadness into life because we love the brothers. One way you can be assured of your salvation is by loving your brothers. A person who, who hates Christians does not have the love of God in him. He is dead in his trespasses and sins. When Paul hated the church, he was dead in his trespasses and in his sins. How does Paul know that he has been made new? How does he know that he has been made alive? Because that hatred turned to love. 
Whoever does not love abides in death. Whoever does not love abides in death, lives in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. That's going back to the Sermon on the Mount. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. There cannot be hate. We cannot have hate. We cannot have indifference. We can have disagreements all day. We're a, fa yeah, we're a fan, we can do that. We need not fear that. But everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Because every act of murder has its root, where? In hate. If the spouse kills their spouse, and they say, why did you do it? They don't say, well, I loved him so much that I killed him. No. I hated him. I hated her. By this we know, we don't guess, we don't suppose, we don't just think, by this we know love. By this we know love. That he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. How, what does that look like? If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Because the love of Christ should be constraining him to help. Little children, let us not love in word or in talk, but in deed and in truth. Christ went to the cross. That, that establishes his love for us. I know Christ loved me because he died for me. And you know what? If we're going to love one another in a way that is pleasing and worthy of Christ, we have to crucify certain things too. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ, Paul says. And I say it too. I am crucified with Christ. You can say it too. If you've been born again, you can say, I am crucified with Christ. Paul says, I've, I've crucified the world. I've crucified the lusts. That's what we do. We kill. We mortify. We take our selfishness. We take that, that, that hidden man and we crucify him. We crucify, and we have to do that if we're going to love one another. I have to crucify my selfishness if I'm to love you well. If you're going to love me well, you have to crucify your flesh. By this we shall know that we are of the truth. Again, assurance. By this we know that we are of the truth. We're loving one another. We're crucifying our selfishness and loving one another. Uh, we're doing to one another what Christ did to and for us. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. When the, the question, am I saved? Am I really saved? Do you love the brothers? Do you love Christ? Ask yourself that. And be honest. Are you animated by love? That should give you assurance. He says in verse 20, for whenever our heart condemns us, I'm not loving like I should. I am not loving like I should. 
Know this. God is greater than your heart. If your own heart is speaking to you, I am not loving like I should. I am not loving like I should. Know that God, who is greater than your heart, is saying, you are not loving like you should. You are not loving like you should. He knows everything, says the passage. For he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Obedience pleases him. We know what he commands of us, and we do that because we love him. And this is, this is his commandment, in verse 23, and this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God abides in him, and by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. The Spirit of God enabled us to love one another. The Spirit of God enables us to love one another. And as part of holiness, the Holy Spirit comes into us. He brings the holiness to us. He brings the ability to love into us. And this is the commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son, of his son, Jesus Christ. The name, that, that, that speaks of who he is. That, that's, that speaks of, of, his, of his attributes, his character, his nature. We love him. We're not to love another Jesus of our own making. Always beware of that. Am I loving the Lord Jesus Christ as he is revealed in Scripture. And love one another just as he has commanded us. Just as he commanded us. Keep his commandments. Then we drop down to chapter 4, verse number 7. Again, beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. From love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Again, how do you know you've been born again? How do you know that you know God? Because you love. Because you have a love you didn't have before. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the satisfaction of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, if God so loved us in this way, that he sent his only son, that he made him the propitiation for our sins, beloved, if God so loved us. That word so is an amplifier. Beloved, if God loved us, it doesn't say that. Beloved, if God so much loved us, we also ought to love one another. And here he puts us in a corner. No one has ever seen God. 
If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected, completed. His purpose is completed in us. If we love one another, no one has seen God. Look what he says in verse 20. Jump down to verse 20. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. How can I say I love God whom I've not seen if I do not have love for you? How can you say I love God whom you have not seen if you have no love for me? These are assurances. These are ways to know. This is how we know we've been passed from, life, uh, from death unto life. This is how we know that God knows us and we know God. These are the assurances. Love, love, love. It's a power that we did not have, but we do now. Now, where does John get all of this? Of course, from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But jump back to John. Again, we're staying with John. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 13. In, in John 14, uh, I'm just going to read this. In John 14, uh, the Lord Jesus says, The Helper... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So he says, the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything I've said so that you might then write it. And so we've just seen John in his first epistle writing, love one another, love one another, love one another. If you want assurance of your salvation, love one another. If you want to know for sure that you know and love God, love one another. Uh, this is the commandment. This is the commandment. Where does he get that? Because the Holy Spirit has ingrained in him, has brought to his memory the events of John chapter 13. Uh, in John chapter uh, 13, uh, verse number 34, before this, uh, he has just expelled Judas. Uh, he has said, what you do, go and do it quickly. And then he says, then he's, then he's moving on, and he, he says, uh, where I go, you cannot come, uh, but I'm going to leave you a new commandment, a new commandment I give to you. And this is what, this what John did. John said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as, I, just as I have loved you. That's the, that's the part that's new. It's always been love your neighbor. That's, always, that's all the way back to Le, uh, Leviticus. That, that's all the way back to the beginning. Love each other. But, but, but this, is a new, new, this is a new aspect to it. Love one another as you've always known, as you've always been commanded, but now I add this, just as I have loved you, just as I have loved you. He's saying this just hours before he is to go to the cross. Just before he goes to the cross, he's saying these things. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, by this, here's another assurance. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If, if, if you have love for one another. As you have love one from another. So right before Christ is going to that cross. 
What words does he, does he leave with the disciples? Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. And all of that, again, is going to be based in our love for him. That's why they go together. If I love God, I have to love my brother. He says in uh, chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. One of those commandments is what? Love one another. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You drop down to verse 21. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, holds them close, keeps them close, loves them, guards them, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Drop down to verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Keep saying it. He will keep my commandment. He will keep my word. And in, in what was one of them? Love one another. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. And then he says in ch chapter 15, chapter 15, Verse number 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another. He dropped down to verse 17. He says, these things I command you. Why? So that you will love one another. So you will love one another. Paul says, I can have all these powers, I can have all these gifts, I can have all these things, but if I have not love, they're worthless. They're worthless. We are commanded to love one another. That's the church. What is the church? It's a collection of people called out of the world brought together with the Word of God, with God himself at the center, and they love one another. Well, how do I know they love one another? Well, because they welcome one another, they admonish one another, they care one for another, they serve one another, they, they bear one another's burdens. They're, they're patient with one another. They're kind to one another. They forgive one another. Uh, they sing praises one with another. They regard one another. Uh, they speak truth to one another. They encourage one another. They seek the good of one another. They stir up one another to love and good deeds. They confess their sins one to another. They pray for one another. They're hospitable to one another. And they're humble towards one another. That is the church. That is our directive. That is our directive. To love one another. And we do that because the Spirit of God is in us. The Spirit of God has taught you and me that God loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And if God has loved you that much, if Christ has loved you that much,
can love one another that much. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that, that we have passed from death, from death unto life. We thank you that we have passed from death unto life, O oh God. And we know that because we have love where we had it not before. We know that because love stirs us where it had not stirred us before. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the sending of thy son. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've come and that you, were, you lived for us and you were crucified for us. That you were buried and you rose again on that blessed third day. That you've ascended into heaven and you have sent the Spirit of God, thy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, to not only dwell among us, but to dwell in us, to seal us, to direct us, to comfort us, to give us all manner of grace, all manner of divine graces that we might share them one with another. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you that you've called us to this gathering. We thank you that the word of God is the center. And we thank you that love Love, 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 love it, it, it is the cause, is the agent, is the motivator of all things. We thank you in the name of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen.